What's up, guys? It's Chris from DMGH Podcast. Hi, it's Chris from DMGH Podcast. Three, two, one, let's go. Welcome to Don't Mind the Golden Handcuffs Podcast or DMGH Podcast. A place for future and present attorneys or any young professional to find the motivation they need to further their minds, careers, and financial success. It's hard to make it out there when you came from nothing. We want to provide you with some help with that. Of course, a one-person team couldn't accomplish this. DMGH Podcast experienced guests will guide us on this road to career and financial success. First, let's take this law thing one step at a time with your host Chris what's up guys welcome to this week's episode of DMGH podcast today we are talking about work-life balance not only in law school but also when you're working as an attorney um, of course Dan's gonna be taking that part since me and Pratik aren't practicing yet not even close lucky guys <laughs> so why don't we start with the most important topic which I guess is first couple of years of practicing that's a great uh thing a lot of people i think um and you probably have experience from your summers working uh they get so caught up in working and trying to meet the billable hours requirement and trying to impress everybody that they put their their own life on the back burner and i think we're all guilty of doing that a lot uh especially in this in the business that we're in we serve clients so we're at almost at their beck and call but uh it's a you really and i have to take my own advice try to make the time for yourself so you don't go crazy is it possible to even have work-life balance the first couple of years? Uh, I think it is. Yeah. Um, I do think it is. Uh, you have to, it's just like if you had a client meeting, what do you do? You schedule it. You put it in your calendar and you make sure that you're there and prepared. And if you schedule things for yourself, whether it's with your wife, whether it's with your friends, whether it's to go catch a game or something like that, and you actually just put it in your calendar as a to-do thing, you get it done. Mm-hmm. And then uh, there are a lot of rewards mentally and emotionally from that and what happens if a partner comes in the picture and kind of threatens that work-life balance uh you quit (laughs) (laughs) Uh, you all i mean there are times obviously if there's an emergency you your your life will have to take a back seat i'm sure you saw that a lot in your summers right oh yeah yeah definitely so what did you see like with other associates that you were seeing that were maybe guiding you mentoring you a little bit as they were in their first or second year and you were, uh, you know, in your summer internships. I know for me, at least I always got the advice. It was, you know, you're the first one there, last one to leave. And so, I mean, I don't know if that holds true from the partner perspective. I know you own your own law firm. So if you're getting an associate, I don't know if you want to hold that standard, but generically, that's what I've been mm-hmm. told, right? You want to be the first one there, show effort and be the last one to leave, which for me, at least makes it seem like work life balance may be really difficult in your first couple of years of practice. Right. Yeah. I, I, I think for me, a lot of it depends on your the partner you're working with. If you have like a great partner you're working with, then all you have to do, like you said, is just let that partner know that you have like your kid's baseball game or you have your wedding anniversary. And it's a lot about communication. Of course, you're not always lucky like that because sometimes your clients need things done and you have to kind of break whatever plan you had. It's true. It's true. Yeah. But a lot of it I definitely saw was just being open about what's important to you, to your partners. Right. Uh, So I have an associate attorney. Uh, He is the first one there. Uh, he might actually also be the last one to yeah. go, but we're a small firm, of course, so it's very different dynamic than the large right. firms. Yeah. I also uh, think you may want to explain to people what billable hours are, just because most people don't know what they are. Oh, uh, that's true. That's true. Dan, why don't you take that one? Uh, I don't have billable hours because it's my own firm, so I just have to oh, do everything. True. But okay. um, from my, you know, I mean, you, so you might actually be better to speak on that if you want to take yeah. it, and then I'll chime in. So billable hours, from my knowledge of it, is um, your firm will require you to work a certain amount of hours. And billable hours are basically hours that you're working for a client. So if you're writing a memo and it takes you three hours, then those three hours are billable hours. Um, A lot of people think that your full day of work is billable hours. It's not. So if you're at work for, let's say, 10 hours or 12 hours, but only six of those hours, you're actually actively working on the memo, um, then it's only eight or six or seven billable hours. It's not the whole time you're there unless you're always there grinding out billable hours, but not most people aren't lucky enough. I think to that's even a, have I'm sorry I mean to cut you off. I oh, think yeah. that's a big uh, problem or misconception for a lot of people going into law school is they don't understand this whole billable hours requirement. They think, oh, if I work nine to five, that's eight hours. So if I do that every day, I'm good. And the, the fact is it's not even close. Uh, yeah. Even as a solo, like everything falls on me. Like there are so many things I have to do to manage the business, run the business, market, meetings, accounting, meetings with my accountant, um, and so on. And all that stuff's not, it's not revenue producing, but it's necessary. 
And uh, it's very important to know what you're getting into, if it, whether it's big firm life or, uh, you know, medium sized firm, small firm or solo practice. Yeah. So, Pratik, you know a lot about law school, obviously. So law school, work life balance. I mean, it's, it's a challenge like it is, you know, with first year associate jobs. It's being able to manage, you know, case briefing, outlining, prepping for class, doing extracurriculars, you know, all that other stuff may not add up in terms of value right away, but things that are necessary to do, like networking events. So it's finding that balance, but also finding time for yourself and being able to take a step back from law school and remembering that there's other things going on in the world besides law school. And I think law school is actually really hard in that sense because um, you have to work hard to get, let's say, an A or A minus. And the last thing you want to do is not put in all the effort you have to get that because right. your grades determine your job in a lot of ways. So for you to you know, let's say not study hard enough, end up getting a B or, or, or worse. Now your whole career has changed directions because of your, your study habits. That's so true. And I guess the same could be said once you started a firm, right? If you yeah. are not the first one in for last right. one to leave and other people are, your career is going to take a very different track pretty quickly if you're noticed as someone who is not putting in the face time. Which, or slacking, yeah. Yeah, you say, oh, you know, could not be you, but Pratik left today at 7.30. He's, he's not interested in being here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, one time, to, but obviously you want right. to do that. But I think communication, like you said, is very important. Yeah, definitely. For instance, I, I know I was at one firm and it was kind of the firm culture to come in at like 10 or 11. But that's because everyone was there until like midnight or 1 a.m. Mm. So a lot of times you have to know the partner you work for. I know um, some partners only got to work at 9 or 10, like I said, but they left at a lot later. So the associate that got there at like 5 a.m. and left that. 5 p.m. looked a lot lazier than the other associates, even though they worked the same amount of hours. Right. It's strategy, right? It's about being able to show face. That's the yeah. big thing in the practice. It's showing your partner that you care and you want to be there. And that's how you get to partnership track. So if they get there at 9, you get there at 8. So you're earlier than everybody else, but you're there long long enough to show face. Yeah. Right. And that's it too. Like Pratik said, show that you want to be there. Because the partner that gives out the work, he's, he wants to know that you want the work. Right. You know? Yeah, he's not going to give it to you if you're not there or don't show that interest of, of yeah. doing stuff so yeah it's kind of funny though it reminds me when i worked uh before going to law school and i worked at an accounting firm in the city and i was always the first one there seven o'clock i was there and if i finished everything by four thirty or 5 i was out and then the partners were like you need to understand facetime and firm culture and i was like you need to understand i quit <laughs> <laughs> uh, it wasn't the track for me like i i have the same pressures now with my own firm but at least I know it's all for me instead of for someone else. Yeah. I mean, with law school, it's definitely kind of similar where you got to know yourself and yeah. know if you spend 14 hours out of your day studying, it might not be worth it to, to study the extra the extra hour. You may be burning yourself out. That's for sure. I mean, I know for us, we noticed that our first semester, we were nonstop at the library studying late into the night. Eventually, you realize your productivity level falls. Same thing at work, right? Mm -hmm. Like once you reach that peak point, you're not going to be able to do any more. The quality of your work suffers, which is what not you what you don't want ultimately. And right. so it's knowing that balance and knowing that end point and knowing yourself. Right? I mean, we learned over time after three years of what works for us and what doesn't, but it's about that balance. Yeah. yeah. But if you're one or two all and you, and you still don't know yet, don't feel bad because sometimes I find oh, yeah. myself over exhausted. I'm like, how did I do this to myself? Yeah. Yeah. It's not even one or two all first year, fourth year, eighth year associates, partners. It happens to all yeah. of us. I feel like only senior partners have found the balance i feel like it takes forever to find yeah, what the it balance takes a long is time you. of course because you know, life's always changing and you're evolving and you're yeah. trying to go with everything and yeah. be the best professionally you could be and be the best also at home and like in your personal life yeah. so and we spoke about this early earlier this week where it's if you're gonna let's say want more personal time or want to work on your mental health you have to fully understand that other things are going to suffer in your life you know so if you want to build up your mental health and relax more you better be okay with the fact that you're going to get less clients Right. Because yeah. oh, yeah. it takes up time to be able to relax and, and work on your mental health. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you got to understand that you can't have uh, the whole cake and eat it, too. Right. Yep. All right. It's economic idea, right? The opportunity cost, right? If you're going to want to get the A's or go to big law, you know, you're giving up time and energy. Supposedly it might be, you know, whatever it might be for you. Yeah. For a lot of people is giving up family time or not doing something you love because you're striving for something extra. So it's all about the opportunity cost. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think that. Uh, most people can't find that balance though it's just it's so hard to find it it's like it's like it's, a, le a leprechaun or something it's like the wizard of oz you just know of it you can never see <laughs> yeah, it yeah yeah it's very difficult even as a, someone who's been practicing now for my goodness this is my ninth year as a solo attorney as a solo practice uh it's very difficult sometimes to have that work-life balance so how let me ask you guys since you're both about to start entering the big firm life how do you plan to knowing knowing what you know you've done very well in school 
you got into the big firm position. How do you guys plan to make sure that you take that balance so you don't end up like a lot of attorneys who end up you know, miserable or depressed or addicted to mind altering substances? Uh, I mean, I guess it's going to be a learning experience. I think going in and being the brand new associate, it's going to be finding out what works for me in terms of time management skills and organization and being able to say, all right, well, I've done the best I can. And it's just about time management. I think once I learn that, which don't know when that's going to be, might be the first year, might not, I might not never or learn it, learn it, but it's going to take time. And I think once I figure that out, I'll have a better idea of how to balance work and life. But as a first year associate, I'm still under the belief that I just got to grind till I can, yeah. can't anymore. You, Chris? Uh, I don't know. I think it's going to be a tough one. It definitely something because I feel like if you go in with the expectations that you're going to be the exception to the rule. Oh, then you're doomed you're, for failure. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So I feel like going in thinking, oh, I know the answer to how to find it is probably going to end up being worse, right. worse for you. I think for me, it's just I'm going to try to work my hardest and just, just ask my mentors, mm -hmm. you know, like don't try to reinvent the wheel. But the wheel is also different for everyone. Right. So I'm going to take it a step at a time and just work my hardest while also trying to keep my whole my whole life together, you know, yeah. you know pay attention to your wife. Uh, it's try to still have a family and kind right. of see so where it takes me. That brings up a good point. Maybe you can shed some light on this. You during law school, for the people listening, you actually got married during law school. So you were able to develop, foster and nurture a relationship significant enough and get married. But wedding was planned, obviously, and you guys ended up getting married. And now you've been married for, I think, a year and a half or so. Mm -hmm. I believe, right. Uh, so maybe you could talk to the people listening and uh, share some of that of how you were able to do that. So I think that goes back to the opportunity costs. Uh, I wish I could say I found the answer. Then like I did amazing that semester and everything worked out amazing. But that's not necessarily the case. Although I kept up my studies, it was like the best grades I've gotten all of mm -hmm. law school. I remember during my internships, I ended up having to take a lot of days off because I had to plan things with Gabby and go to like cake tastings and stuff like that. Oh, poor so, guy. <laughs> <laughs> when you have in the back of your head, they have an exam, oh, I, you know, I like the whole time you're eating cake and you're not even smiling. Like, imagine that. That's terrible. But I remember I had to go to my supervisor and uh -huh. tell her, hey, you know, I'm sorry that I had to miss, you know, certain days of work last week. And it didn't feel good as an employee because you want to try your hardest. You always want to impress the yeah. person above you or your client yeah. or so, yeah, there's yeah. a balance. And that was the first time I think in my, I guess, this in history that I ever left a job not positive that if I was trying to get a job there, like a full-time employment, I wasn't sure if, if I tried to, I would ever get it there anymore. Wow. Just because I, I know I didn't put, I didn't give in my all. Mm -hmm. yeah, my all. Wow. Yeah. But in terms of my grades, it helped me with my grades for some reason because I think I had a lot more relaxing time with Gabby since we were planning things for the wedding. Right. It could be stressful, but as you guys know, as attorneys or law students, you rather talk about wedding than talk about torts or talk about oh, yeah. business organizations. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> so my grades like skyrocketed that semester right. because I kind of gave myself a little bit of a mental break. But then again, the right. opportunity cost. I had a mental, br I had a mm -hmm. mental break, and I planned the wedding, so I didn't have enough time to really dedicate to the internship ad. Although it was fine. You know, like I got great reviews, but yeah. inside, you know, that you could always do better. And yeah. that was one of those where That's I tough. definitely could say I could have done, done a lot better. Right. Wow. What about you, Pratik? I mean, look, I'm single, so I don't have as many responsibilities. So I get to take care of myself more so. So mm -hmm. I try to make time for myself of doing like I love football. So every Sunday for mm -hmm. me during law school was watching the football game. And I know the Jets suck and I know they've lost, but <laughs> that, that was my one, one thing. So I kinda, that's a mental break and it's still your exactly. time and it's something you really enjoy. Right. right. It's that yeah. or like time with family. Kind of, I tell my mentees and even in law school is like, find something that matters to you and yeah. don't let it go. Cause people give advice all the time. Like right. oh, once you're in law school, forget everything else. Uh, I remember hearing that. Yeah. And you do that and you forget. Uh, it gets worse other once thing. you start working. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do that. You have other things that are important in life too. And Absolutely. I tell people all the time, I tell my mentees, just focus, like you'll be fine. It's opportunity cost, like, right? Mm -hmm. If you have to do something for your family, you can't give up family because, you know, you missed a class here or there. Like, it's just some of those things that you have to balance what's important for you and what's not. Yeah. Right. But I think that being told that you have to give everything up for law school may be a good way to set a person up for success for one reason only. If you're told that you should always prioritize family in all cases, and let's say something does pop up on like the day of your final, you might be conflicted in that in that in that area. You know? Unless it's a super, it's a really bad emergency. For most cases, you should prioritize your finals, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So it's one of those things where you can't always do the right thing when it comes to that. Right. Because I think deep down we all know the right thing is to be there for your family. Of course. It's an emergency. Of course. Um, I just had a client actually this week. Uh, we were in uh, mediation that lasted about seven hours. Jeez. And we were just about to settle, and she got a call, and her father was rushed to the emergency room with kidney failure. 
and and she's such a strong woman and she just like <gasps> and like she broke down crying and i was like go I'll, I'll i'll finish go i'll take care of it and like she just had to go and like i'm sure like she wants to finish this case and like put it to bed but you know when something like that happens you're, you're just not there and you just gotta go yeah and it's also taking advantage of the downtime you, you do have when you're a prioritizing mm-hmm. family it's like a weird story that i tell i'm not necessarily it's not something i'm necessarily proud of but i think it does show my dedication as you know uh my senior year of college my dad had a heart attack remember yeah. when uh when the whole family was down in disney yep um and i remember i rushed to the hospital to see my dad and i brought my lsat tutoring book this was, this was before law school. Yeah. So I. Because you couldn't even like think you could take the time out. Exactly. I remember so, you told me about that story. Yeah. yeah. Like the right thing to do was go see my dad, which is what I did. I was the first person there. Mm-hmm. Of course, the whole family was in Florida. So <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. But I got there. I made sure everything was okay. I got the doctor. I, I yeah. took my role as the only person in Jersey that could do this. But when I was by his bed and he was like sipping water, I was just going through LSAT problems. Yeah, that stuff, yeah. Wow. That, that's something that you got to do sometimes. Have you ever had a situation where you kind of had to. I guess that's like every week. Every day, year, right? every yeah. week. Yeah, it never ends. It yeah. never ends. Well, um, have you found it improve over the years as you? I have. Um, well, as I've done more of the investing too, I, I shift my focus to that, but I make sure I take the time for that. I make sure I'm home almost every day for dinner with my wife and daughter. Um, I make sure I spend a couple hours with them before she goes up to bed and I come downstairs to work again. Um, so the work that still gets done, I just don't... Uh, you know, even but it, once my daughter was born, I always made that a priority because I, I knew that time was going to go fast and you don't get it back. And the work will always be there. Yeah. Or, or there will always be clients that need help. There will always be, you know, may, are you going to do as well every single year? Maybe not. But, you know, like, again, what's most important to you? Like I sacrifice a little bit maybe on generating more clients to have time with my wife and daughter. Is there anything you use to kind of take a step back away from law, like the law? Because I know like for us, like as new attorneys, all you ever want to think about is the law and how I can do better. But as an experienced attorney now, like, do you do anything to kind of give yourself an yeah. escape? Uh, real estate investing. Okay, that, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> uh, but that was a big thing. But it also like it keeps me it keeps me motivated, right? The reason I have I still continue to work hard as an attorney is to uh, facilitate the investing side. But I also make time for you know I read for fun. I read a lot of business books. I like to read a lot. Um, I, there's a couple of TV shows I like to watch to just you know veg yeah. out kind of stuff. So. I take some time veg out. I exercise three or four times a week. I know you probably can't tell, but I do. It's three or four times a week. I do weightlifting and then walk on the treadmill and watch maybe a Knicks game. I, I'm I just like you being a Jets fan. I'm a Knicks fan. So Same here. Terrible. Um, but I still you know watch the games. I like to get into basketball. I, I try to do some things to get my mind off of the law because you don't want to be 24-7. Law, law, law. All I think about is the law and then you don't have anything else in your life. Yeah. So we were actually talking about this recently. So we're in the clinic now and what happens a lot of times is when you're not in the clinic, you're still kind of investing in the ideas over and over again. Maybe you should tell some people like what the clinic, is, like what is a clinic? So law school? most law schools have a program under the clinic branch or whatever they might want to call it is where you get actual cases and the professor supervises the client matters. So, as a student. As a student, right. Uh-huh. So we have been working on trust and estate issues and you have a variety of things we've done nonprofit work. So we've been working on this case for a while now. It's been causing a lot of issues. So we kind of bring it home with us and we've both been talking about it recently where it's kind of getting to us eventually, where there's no escape from it. And so we were kind of talking about it, trying to find a way to kind of step away from it all and like stopping ourselves from wanting to talk about it. Because it's easy to talk about issues you deal with all the time, yeah. but oh, yeah. finding that break. Yeah, and that's very important because otherwise you end up immersed, immersed in it, excuse me. And like when you start working, yeah, your clients become your yeah. thinking about them, not even when you're at work, like it's just the case and like strategizing and like, oh, can I do this better? Can I do that better? Because you always want to excel. Right. Yeah. So. It's yeah. very important to try to find some outlets yeah. um, to take your mind off of the law. I think also helps to make pick your friends in law school wisely. You know, uh, if if all your friends are gunners, like all three years, and it might impact your mental health because you're going to mm-hmm. always be talking about law school. You know, ha- have friends that are gunners, of course, like me and Pratik, like we're gunners. But, you know, we also know to not always talk about law school. You, you have to have friends that could talk about other things you if know i can give a tip to everyone watching or listening is have friends outside of law yeah oh, you yeah. know it, like because it balances you because then you you can go hang out with your boys or, or your friends whatever and like we'll catch a game and not even mention the law so that also gives you that mental break so you can come back recharged and ready to go yeah for sure is there any like tip you would give someone besides have a hobby in terms of law school i mean i really think it's just finding an outlet and knowing yourself right because i think you know for myself it's when you get to these times where you're doing a lot and you get really invested and you kind of get absorbed in the law, it's knowing, all right, I need to find a way to stop. 
and knowing that trigger point because i know i mean i've talked about it with you recently it's like you lose that aspect of why you're doing this or you lose the motivation and it's, it's hard to figure it all out by yourself and it's having the friends and having the mentors or just you know going out with your friends for a drink it really does help you reset a little yeah. bit yeah and i think that's key just yeah. knowing how to reset sure. i think one big for me i remember had a uh, mentor my first year of law school his name was adam and one of the best pieces of advice he gave me was to um, just pay attention to yourself when you're studying don't worry about other people if you're studying for eight hours and you get the material don't look to your left and see someone and see someone studying for 16 and think that you're you're not as well off you know because that right. person might be taking 16 hours to learn the to learn a couple things that you already know yep so don't look at others use an example i don't know i don't know the metaphor but you know how horses wear those blinders yeah so be like a horse with blinders that you can only see straight don't look to the left or right yep. and i use that for my two on three l and my grades you know like were great and awesome. um i was a lot less stressful right good yeah i think that's important what you said is like you, you want to stay in your lane focus on yourself yeah don't compare yourself to others yeah like you said what like what now because i'm so much more efficient because i've been practicing for so long things that used to take me an hour i get done now in 20 minutes so that frees up some time too so like just because someone's at the office till 10 p.m doesn't mean they're necessarily working harder or smarter than yeah. someone who leaves at five but because the person at five might already know those things that that's person's taking three hours to master yeah so for sure that's definitely good is there anything in terms of else in terms of law school don't uh, go oh. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking we'll, of that, we'll watch do the episode. Podcast. Yeah, yeah, watch I'm the sure. podcast. Should you go to law school? Yeah, I'm sure uh, there's plenty to talk about with the pros and cons oh, uh, yeah. for another yeah. time. What's like the worst thing to do in terms of, uh, like the worst thing to do for your mental health when you're in law school and you're, when you're an attorney? You get absorbed fully in the law uh, and not pay attention to anything else in your life. There's a great, uh, not a great expression, a very true expression. It says the law is a jealous mistress requires all your attention all your time and the minute you neglect it it will like swallow you whole so uh you need to make sure it's very easy as you both know from your law school experiences from your summer experiences when you get a case or a, uh, an outline or something and you you could just dive in and you can be there for hours and days and days and days and if you do that you, you know the clients will keep coming and they'll keep having needs and demands and if you keep succumbing to that without taking the time for yourself you're going to do yourself a disservice because yeah. you'll get burned out I'm sure you know that that's very yeah. common. Attorneys yeah. get burned out after several years of practice and some of them go and do something completely different with their life. Yeah. And it's funny you say that because now after my last summer and after obviously mm -hmm. talking to you a lot, uh, on my downtime, I don't even keep my cell phone near me mm -hmm. because even getting email from someone that's school related or work related, it just your whole mood changes. Yeah. That's, uh, I don't, uh, you, I'll let you say something in a second. But now when I come home, I, put my, I try to put my phone in a different room Yeah. because uh, I don't want to be bothered because we think we're in control, but as soon as that mm -hmm. thing rings or the screen lights up, you're you're checking and you're distracted. And if it's an email, you're like, oh, do I have to respond right away? And like, you just get th that cycle. It just, it's Definitely vicious. I start doing that. Yeah. So I did that even today. Professor emails called right away. I was like, oh no. I told him <laughs> yeah. I was going to be gone for the weekend. And I was like, never mind. I'll answer anyways. <laughs> yeah. It's a horrible habit. And it's that's weird. why I keep it away from me too, because you're not even tempted, you know? And you can't right. feel guilty about it either if you didn't know you got if the you call. Didn't know, right. And it's not personal. Like, I always, and I think I do this now because I know I'm not going to be able to do that when I'm. The first couple of years I'm practicing, practicing, yeah, you know, so sure. I want to be the best, the best I can. Did you, did you see, or did it maybe any of your viewers have seen Better Call Saul? I watched the first season. Okay, have you seen it? I haven't. Okay, so the guy comes home and he puts his phone and and key in uh, his watch in the mailbox outside. He does not even allow it in his house. That's cool. Wow. And I'm and like the more I go on in my life, I'm like he's got the right idea. <laughs> I'm about to start doing that. Yeah, just leave it at the idea. office. I don't need it. Yeah, I don't think you guys can. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely yeah. not. No. Get fired the next day. Yeah. Jeez. All right, so mm -hmm. I found online some suggestions for having a work-life balance. I read a little bit of it. It looks really horrible. <laughs> it does not look like the keys <laughs> to be a successful attorney. Um, or actually, it is. It's a key to be a good attorney, but it does not look like it helps work-life balance. So maybe you'll have better insight to this. Sure. So um, deliver better legal services. That seems like kind of not related. That I don't think that has anything to do with work-life balance. I think you just, you just want to be a good attorney. Like you want to do the best you can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anything with that? I mean, correlates to the classroom, right? Like you would want to be the best student you can, but yeah, not really. I don't see how that has anything to do nah. with you know, build a better market focus. The only thing I could see with that is like, have clients that don't want you. Yeah, but <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, this one I could see: develop better teams, lawyers, paraprofessionals, support, 
contract staff and delegate more work. Although that seems like more of a you That's thing a in thing the first year thing. associate. Yeah, you, your student. first couple of years, you're not even going to have an option to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You might get a paralegal or a secretary who helps you with your oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's limited but, what they can it's do. Limited. Yeah, you don't want to give them because you want to show the partner what you're doing, right? Yeah. So I do have staff, support staff, and I've been able to grow my firm more But when I had more support staff. Yeah. I think law school, there might be something to this for law school. For me, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have a beautiful wife that I got married to during law school, but she was able to help me with a lot because I could say, I'm really hungry. I'm in law school uh, studying in the library. Can you get me food and drop it off? Like things like that, it kind of helped me not yeah. have to worry about the little things. Yep. So if you have someone that loves you or wants to take or takes care of you. Or you can pay. Or you could pay someone. Yeah. Uber Eats Uber, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. You get delivery. Like, so yeah. you, that time is, again, your time is your biggest, most precious commodity. So uh, you know, as you're busy in work or in law school, you can, you know, spend a couple dollars extra to get it delivered to you. Now you save that half hour or hour. And if you obviously turn it into a billable hour, then there you go. that's off to you. Yeah. And I think now it's, it's a pretty amazing time because I see websites popping up that will cite your work for you. They're not that accurate. I know I used it once. And I showed it to critique like the citing master, I and he was off. like, he was like, he's spitting it. He was like, <laughs> I it off. I was like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but one day, one day, very soon, that's just working on it. Th- th- gonna... There'll be there'll be something you could press, and your and word processor will automatically cite everything to the most recent. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I hope that's, that does happen. That's why. Also, if you pay attention, there's a lot of talk of robots i.e computers stuff like that replacing law- the need for lawyers you see i don't buy that for one reason um a lot of what lawyers do isn't finding their case it's arguing the right way mm-hmm. so 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 a robot could find a case like nine cases for something but you need to be able to argue the right. case correctly so a lot of times a case I, could go both ways you can use a case to yeah. defend or to prosecute I've, someone i've done on both sides of course yeah. so i agree with you i think it's going to separate the better lawyers from the weaker lawyers. I yeah. think that's yeah. going to help. Oh, for sure. Because yeah, I think yeah, yeah. people are just going to be like, oh, I can just go use this new program and I don't need a lawyer. Exactly. They're going to get hurt. And then they're going to be like, oh, you should have used a lawyer. Yeah. So. Yeah. Part of our job is still client work, right? Like, how's a robot going to tell us how to interact with the client? Yeah. Right. Client well, really that, yeah. That's also what I'm saying yeah. is that's yeah. going to differentiate the people. As you know, both of you know, yeah. they're, most attorneys are not the most necessarily social and cordial right. people. Yeah. So I think it's going to really hurt them who they they're, they don't want to talk to a client. They just want to sit in the back and do the research and the writing. Whereas for people like us who are, are good communicators, it's going to make us excel even more, I think, make us stand mm. out more. One thing that I think would take our job away in a sense was if those programs had um, a risk analysis type of meter. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times um, corporate clients don't want to know what they can do, but know what they could do. So if some program was able to tell you the risk of you getting caught doing something, yeah. that might take a lot of jobs away. Because a lot of times they'll ask you, like, what could we do? And you got to be like, well, it depends yeah. on the situation. If a machine could be like, you have 80 percent likelihood you'll get caught by the FBI if you do this. <laughs> yeah. Then like that would be a lot more useful than right. some attorney that doesn't know. Right. That's true. You know, that's the future right there. Yeah. If Google, if, you, Google, <laughs> if you're listening. Google Law. <laughs> We're going to get ads on our phones today. Yep. Yeah. OK. So. Oh, speaking of that, implement better technology. Uh, as a practicing attorney, yeah, because again, it makes you more efficient, but it, it doesn't create work life balance if you're still yeah. using that time to not balance, yeah. right? If you're yeah. if you're able to get stuff done in an hour instead of two, what are you doing with that additional hour? If it's I'm diving into another case, I'm billing another hour, you're not improving your time management, yeah. you're just working harder. Yeah. yeah. But if you take that hour or even a half hour and you go spend it with your wife, yeah. or you go and watch a game, watch the Jets, like then you're getting some of that work balance, life balance that you can. Yeah have your own time and and kind of decompress from the stresses of what we do. I think something that builds to this is back then people used to write down their billable hours or have their their secretaries do it. Now there's programs that do it like almost automatically. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to use your time more wisely, that may help you a little bit. But like you said, if you're done an hour early, it's not like you could go home. You're just going to find other ways to keep up. Especially what you said, Pratik, like if you got to be the first one there and the last one there, even if your work is done, you're not leaving. So like, what is that really saving you? Yeah. Right. Um, Acquire better management skills. That seems more of a. I mean, I think that's just good common sense, real world stuff. Is like you want to be a good leader. You want to, you know, the more, if you have better management skills, you and you want to be a partner at a firm, you're gonna have more of a chance of doing that. If you want to be a solo and run your own firm, or grow, a, start a firm and grow it into a small, mid sized firm at one point, you have to have good management skills. This other website seems to be better even though it's full of memes mm-hmm. uh number one is find your sweet spot that's like exactly what we were talking about this whole right. entire time absolutely you know that, that's probably i would say the most important thing for work-life balance is you find the thing that makes you happiest outside of work and you make time for it yeah whether it's watching a game spending time with your wife working out dreaming of 
and whatever you want to dream of. Your vacation yeah. in six years that's coming up. And under there it says, choose your field of law wisely. For I sure. don't think you guys have a choice. No, for us, <laughs> yeah. 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 I I chose my area of law and then I expanded into an, a couple areas of law. So I like I don't do criminal defense. Like I wouldn't I don't have any interest in it. Even if a client came to me, I'd be like, no, sorry, I don't do it. Yeah. Nor do I want to. So from that perspective, yeah, you want to choose something you're at least interested in because if you're going to spend that much time doing something, you should, you better like yeah. it on some level. Yeah. Uh, who was it? I think it was. Um, who's that guy who invested in some internet company? Became a billionaire. He owns like a basketball Bill, team now. Bill Gates. No, no, he owns Mark like a Cuban. Bas- Mark Cuban. He yeah. said, "Don't follow your passion." I think he said, "Follow what you're good at." I think that might be on the contrary view of yours, where it's like if you're amazing at tax law and you do it effortlessly, even though you might not enjoy it, that might be a good life move if you want to be good at what you do and therefore have more time to yourself, you know, especially like if you hate being around people. But let's say you love doing litigation, you might better off doing transactional and doing something where you could work from home. I feel like there's so much conflicting yeah, I mean, everyone's different, right? You got it. Like, what, what's important to you is, is different than what's important to you is different than what's important to me. As long as you find something that you enjoy doing outside of the law that gives you satisfaction, that gives you peace, that gives you happiness, then do it. This one here seems pretty funny. Um, Saturdays or Sundays, pick one. One's for you. Don't touch your work if it's not an emergency. That doesn't seem like something that's possible for us. Hey, man, if I can <laughs> do it, luck. Sunday night football every day. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. Uh, I try to take one day. Uh, a week usually saturday that i don't do any work yeah and then sunday i do some work to prep because because right we're always thinking about oh my god i'm gonna come in monday and yeah. have eighty thousand emails that i have to answer and 16 voicemails and oh i gotta get a jump start on it so you end up working on sunday to get ready and i think in law school law school i think that's attainable your 2l and 3l oh, yeah. like now i have more than one day off but my 2l i definitely had sunday off yeah i mean one l is the process where you kind of spend every yeah. day every waking moment yeah. trying to figure out law school 2 all kind of gets a little bit easier mm-hmm. i mean 3 all now we have what friday saturday sunday monday off yes, i mean I'm jealous yeah we figured it out yeah. i guess but uh, it's similar to what you guys are going to experience probably in the firm life right your first year you're going to work probably every day so oh, literally yeah. every day seven days a week figuring it out your second year is going to be a little easier your third year is going to be a little easier yeah and then your fourth year is when i'll see you again <laughs> sounds about right yeah. <laughs> um this one seems i'm trying to find ones that seem so wrong that mm. is that's being told to people um uh, be transparent about your personal limitations. It seems like the worst thing to do. To who? I, I uh, to yourself. To okay, your partners, well, or? okay. Reading it now, it's not as. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, okay. Because it's okay. So this is what I'm saying. Do you have a disability? Of course, you should let yes. your firm know if you have a disability. Uh, ongoing personal commitment conflicts. Just make sure they're not conflicts. You can't just be being like, "Oh, sorry, Adam. Timmy's soccer practice is Monday. I won't be able to right. come in today." Special requirements for workplace accessibility. Yeah, I mean, if you have a disability, for sure, that's yeah, something yeah. you should be telling people. Right. I might get the transparency thing. I know over the summer when I did my summer associateship, like they told us, like, once you get too much work, let the partners know that you're kind of dealing with all this work so they can deal with it within themselves to let you know what's more important, what's not. So I think mm-hmm. maybe transparency in that form makes sense. Yeah. At the same time, you know, it's about being able to put your best foot forward. So knowing your balance right. there, too, right. is important. That's definitely true. I think... Being transparent to your partner is so important too because a lot of times you'll be working on a project and you worked for, let's say, two or three days straight and you went in the wrong direction <laughs> and you have to start over. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know, that's, no yeah. that's like the worst thing. And one, the, the best advice I got the second I got to my firm for my 2L summer was keep your partner updated. And that yeah. saves me on so many assignments where I thought I was going in that direction, direction. I was feeling good about it too. Did all my research, went to Lexus, went to Lexus customer support oh, yeah. to make sure I was on the right, in the right, in the right direction. Right. Went to the partner and, he, and it wasn't that I was doing the wrong thing. It was that the question wasn't phrased that right. Yeah. So as you guys know, the second your question isn't framed right. It's so, all about the questions. Yeah, direct, ask the right questions. Um, but yeah. <laughs> surround yourself with supportive family or friends bam that's like the best thing that's, right there that's probably yeah. the best one of the best pieces of advice um people who will understand that they can't see you as often as they used to and they understand that you're now having a different career life and will not get angry or upset with you if you have to miss things but take advantage of the time when you are available and maintain that relationship i remember gabby um my 1l anniversary we had half an hour to spend it because i was just so into you know crim law i wanted to get the best grade i could right and our anniversary half an hour 
a, a, a time together. You're very generous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, I'm half yeah. kid, but I'm half serious yeah. because yeah. there are yeah. people that'll be like, "I'm not you no know, zero time for you." Yeah, so. and it was tough. It was tough to tell her, but she completely understood. Yeah. Gabby definitely she, that's definitely an atte- a, a testament to to this. Yeah. She was very understanding. If she but, wasn't, not only would I've done poorly in law school because of the outside stress, but it would have ended the you know ended the whole relationship. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but what do you think in terms of family? And- I, I think outside of that, you know, obviously great support system, but also having someone you can just talk to, right? Sometimes mm-hmm. family may not understand because they don't know what comes into law school and the law field itself. Right. So having a friend or a colleague or a mentor that you can kind of vent to, to kind of get all the stress off your head and off, you know, off your chest, knowing that, hey, this is what I'm dealing with. And because someone, let's say a mentor can give you advice on what to do, or a friend can kind of just sit there and understand what you're going through. Having that one person that you know is able to understand you and have a conversation honest, openly, honestly, I think is important too. Right. So it is possible. It is possible. Yeah. Just, just not probable. It's not probable. <laughs> Definitely not. That's right. It's possible. It's something you have to commit to, just like everything else. You have oh, yeah. to commit to it and make it happen. Yeah. What do you do if, if let's say you're every week you have a certain time that you dedicate to just family and friends, and you do get that phone call? where you're told that you have to do something or in your terms, what happens if you get a call from someone in clinic or uh, you find out there's an assignment that you didn't know about due tomorrow? You just, do you just give everything up or do you still set boundaries? I'm going to say I make the rookie mistake. I freak out and go all heads in. <laughs> like even today, we got an email. I called right away. I was like, oh my God, what just happened? Now I, I overinvest in a lot of things, but I'm trying to learn as I go. And I think it's a learning process of like how to kind of uh-huh. keep the balance. But Maybe yeah, you can tell us. I think some, I'm going to cut you off. Yeah. The more the more practice you get, yeah. the more time and experience under your belt, then you you're able to more know of what you can do and what you what's really truly urgent and what's right. just you know clients being unreasonable or this can wait till the morning or something like that. Yeah, I'm sure it's a learning process. Hopefully, yep. get there one day. Yeah. This is one post on Reddit, so I'm going to read this to you guys and uh, get your opinion on it. Uh, and this will just show everyone listening that if you're not in law school, show how true this is what we're talking about. So this was posted a year ago. People talk a lot about work-life balance as lawyers, but what about work-life balance as law students? Is it possible? Has anyone ever achieved it? Or is law school just so all-encompassing that I should give up on having a life outside of it? For some, for some background, I'm a 2L. I take three classes, work an internship, and work a pro bono project for the NAACP. I'm a student rep on two different orgs as well. I'm on a mock trial tre- a mock trial team, but I don't have a competition this semester. I go back and forth between feeling like I don't do enough and feeling like I do too much. That is hey, I sympathize. That hit in the that, that hit in the feels. Yeah, because you know we've done it. We've done the internships, the right. clinic, the journals, the classes. I think was it two semesters ago we took like four classes we interned we clinic and we did a journal yeah. so I get it it's, it's a crazy. lot and we volunteered in the, for the Fremis be a lot the minority student oh, yeah. program we did it was, it was a lot of time there I get it but like I said it's like we've been talking about it's so again that balance and learning right. I mean we haven't figured it out clearly we're still doing it yep. but I'm sure it's something attainable it's just learning as you go I definitely feel that thing where this person said in the end where I go back and forth between feeling like I don't do enough and feeling like I do too much yeah. that's like law school you know that's law. In general, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. The law. It's, yeah. You always you always struggle with that. Of, Am I doing enough? And then like, oh my god, I did so much this week. Like, I did I do too much? And yeah, th- there's never a really a good answer. You have your law your law firm, so yes. this must be almost surreal, like so accurate. Because with with yep. you, you could make however much you want to make if you find as many clients as you want. You know, so it's kind of up to you what your salary is in terms of that, isn't it? Um, in a way. I mean, there's only so many hours you have in a day. Of course, yeah. So you can try, and I, in my through my throughout my years of practice, I've had these peaks and valleys of where we get a tremendous amount of volume come in. Then you know, if the work can't get done the right way, then it's irrelevant because then the next month or the next two months, everyone's talking about how you didn't do a good job, and then you have to try to rebuild your brand again. Yeah, there's one comment here where it seems kind of exaggerated. Um, I'm a 2L and I'm basking in free time. Well, now in the OCI, we're hell, but now it's smooth sailing. <laughs> I just imagine I wonder this... if that person's on any mind. All <laughs> yeah. I just imagine this kid's like on the beach and he, he's not realizing he's missing like every yeah, class. Right? Like, he thinks the class starts in a week and it's been like two weeks in already. <laughs> uh, one is law students overestimate, overstate the amount of work in law school and in life in general. Do what's good for you. Uh, do what's good for you. I, I say the first part again. Uh, law students overstate the amount of work in law school and life in general. 
Um, I know it depends where you go. Do, yeah, yeah some do. it's it's all relative, right? What yeah. someone someone does overboard and is not. See, it goes back to what we talked about. What takes yeah. someone two hours doesn't mean they're working harder or smarter. It's just it took them two hours. You can get it done in one hour. Yeah, exactly. I definitely agree. That's the same thing, right? With law school, like you know, some of us took fifteen hours a day to do work, and mm-hmm. some of us some do get done in five. Yeah. And you know, it's... it depends on what classes you take, which professors, right? right? So some are yeah. harder. And, and what also you have, I know certain law schools don't even have grades, right? Isn't it pass plus or what is yeah, it? Yeah, so like it? top fourteen, it's like pass, mm-hmm. it's like pass or super pass, whatever it super, is. Super pass, super pass. Weird, you like passed that. grades. You get a cape with like, you. You, with you, don't, your you, don't, need, you don't, don't it doesn't even matter as long as you get 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 yeah, in, you have a job. You know, there's a good uh joke, right? What do you call the person who graduates last in law school? A lawyer. A lawyer. Yeah. Right, what's the person that graduated last in med school? A, a doctor. doctor. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you graduate last in law school. Though. But I think, but I think in, in, it's different in the sense. Like if I were to say that, I would say, what do you call uh, the person that came in last in, in, in medical school? Uh, a doctor. If you call it like, like what do you call the last uh, you know law student? Unemployed. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's true. Or a solo <laughs> practitioner. <laughs> so like that's the thing. Is, is there anything else cool here? Yeah, I think this comment kind of encompasses everything we talked about. It's definitely possible, but just like at work, it depends on time management, prioritizing, and knowing when you just have enough on your plate. That's right. Yeah. And I think the hardest part is deciding to to let go of things on your plate because it's commitment. You can't, like with law and yeah. law school, you can't just be like, oh, it's, this is too much for me, so I'm just going to let this go. Yep. That's true. Wow. You, you can't tell? be a yes man. You can't be a yes man. Can't be a yes Critique. Man. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. You say yes to everything and anything. That's the way I've been doing it. But you also can't be like me. We're like, I will be blunt about me not wanting to do things sometimes. <laughs> but of course, I, I don't do it for work. I'll do it to lesser things, you know? Like yeah. if I get asked to volunteer for something and I know that I just, I can't do it, I, w- I will tell them like, look, I, I can't right. do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I say yes to everything. I, I can give tours. Says, yeah. I can do MSP. Yeah. I do everything yeah. and anything yeah. I can. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Sure you still give tours yeah, in I law do, school. I do everything I can. If you're listening and you want to see Pratik, yeah, you're going to Rutgers yeah. Law. Going to Rutgers Law tour. <laughs> That's it. When's the next tour? Fri- no, actually, for this Friday. Doing the this Friday, coming up. Come, everybody, see Celebrity Pratik. There you go. Do the worst tour ever. Oh, man. There's so many articles about this, like how to find work-life balance. It's the like, ABA published one? Yeah, Jeez. the ABA published one. It's all articles, so it's not like I could talk anything. I'm not going to read the whole thing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like, come on. Um yeah, it's it's definitely possible, but not easy. It's a learning thing, right? I think that's the best way yeah. to put it. You got to learn what works for you, what doesn't, and once you figure it out, great. Some of us will never figure it and out. Know, right? And know what you want. Like, if you don't want to work at a big law firm, yeah, you should always try your hardest, but like, you don't have to suffer. To pay. If you know your goal, you don't have to suffer as much. Right. You know? I think that helps. But I think everyone should try working the hardest to see where they get. You never know. Yeah. You know? No. But yeah. Is there anything else you guys want to say? That's all I got. That's all I got today. All right. Well, thank you guys. As always, it's Chris from DMGH Podcast. Um, please subscribe. <laughs> uh, follow me on Instagram. It is DMGH Podcast. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, comment and like as well. If you're listening on Apple Podcast or Google Play, subscribe to that. And until next time, bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.